I was doing a show in, in London called Over the Lovely War. And George Harrison and John Lennon saw it. And George said to me the famous line, Vic, you got to be in our film. And then he said, you got to be in all our films. I said, why? He said, well, if you're not in them, me mum won't come and see him because she fancies you. <laughs> so the reason why I was in Hard Day's Night because of uh, George's mum fancied me, you see. And I eventually met Louise. But what the extraordinary, extraordinary thing about the effect it had on my life still does that. You're the reason why I'm here. You see, these things that happened, why we're here, we're sharing all our experiences. You're sitting out there telling the stories. Well, I'm here to share what happened to me. I came to New York with that show, Old Lovely War. We go on stage on the opening night on Broadway. On the opening night, Hard Day's Night, I didn't realize, of course, this was 1964. It was showing around the corner summer, but I didn't know that. I go on stage for the opening, and I'm the MC in this show, right? So I come out and I go, um, ladies and gentlemen, and just at that moment, I hear ah! screams. And I look up in the guards up in the top there, and there are these people screaming. And I looked in the wings, and I could see the stage manager ringing for security. And I said, it's okay. I said, it's Beatle fans. It's okay. It's okay. So I said, hello, my darlings. And they said, I heard somebody shouting, he touched George. <laughs> and I said, look, I tell you what, this is a serious musical about World War I. So at the end of the show, come down, sit in the front row, and we'll do a 10-minute semester on the Beatles. Okay? Thank you, they said. Right. Now, I did that for two reasons. One was because I wanted to get on with the show. But secondly, I know what it's like to hunger after knowing something about somebody you really love and will never ever meet. When I was the kid, if somebody said they knew Rita Hayworth, oh my God, or Flash Gordon, oh my God. And so they, at the end of the show, they came and sat in the front row, just where you are now. And they were trembling and crying and shaking. Tell me about George or, or John or Paul or Ringo. And of course, you see, at that time, at that time, not much was known about them. It was the mop tops. They all looked alike. Nobody actually knew the difference between them then. This is the early days. Hard Day's Night was just out. And I said, well, i tell you what. So I always told him the same story, which I'm now going to tell you. When we were filming, um, I got flu. And the Beatles came to the hotel to visit me, each in their turn. And as they visited me, it's what they were like. The first person to come in to visit me, say the bed is there, was George Harrison. He walked in and said, hello Vic, I've come to plump your pillows. <laughs> Whenever anyone's ill in bed, they always have to have their pillows plumped. And he plumped me pillows and he left, right? Ringo walked in sat down by the side of the bed, picked up the hotel menu, looked at me, looked at the menu and said, once upon a time there were three bears, <laughs> mummy bear, daddy bear and baby bear, and he left, right? <laughs> John, John Lennon walked in and said, Sieg heils Feinand! <laughs> the doctor's coming to do experiments about you, Sieg heil Hitler! And he left, right? Paul McCartney opened the door and said, is it catching? I said, yes. He closed the door, never saw him again. <laughs> so that was the story I told them because, you see, then they had some crumb of comfort, something to take to school the next day and say, plump pillows or, or John, they had something to go with. So it became a big thing. They began to come from, from Detroit. Chicago, Philadelphia. They flew in just for that moment of coming at the end and sitting there and doing the 10 minute semester on the Beatles. It became a thing. And they'd be outside the stage door. A crowd of kids outside the stage door. And I'd come out and they'd say, Mr. Spinelli, Mr. Spinelli, what did George Harrison say? And I'd say, plump the pillows. Oh my God! <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> what does it mean? I'm, it was wonderful, they were wonderful. And then one day Warren Beatty came to see the show. 
And he's sitting in the dressing room, and he says, Victor, uh, so there's a crowd of teenage girls at the stage door there. Is there any other way out of this building? Because if I go through that door, they'll, they'll just tear me apart. <laughs> but I didn't like to say they were Beatle fans. I said, oh, I said, they won't hurt you. Come on. So out we went. We got to open the door. And all these girls went, Victor! <laughs> and they parted, leaving space for Warren Beatty to walk totally ignored. I can still see his face even today. Well, well, it became such a big thing that uh, they formed the Victor Spinetti Fan Club. Right, so the Victor Spinetti Official Fan Club of America. And they were outside their stage. Well, it became this huge uh, business of, it was really it was amazing. My, I won the Tony Award that, that year. And I uh, rang my pet. Oh, well, thank you. I rang my parents in Wales, never been on a plane in their lives, and I sent them plane tickets. And when they got to the airport, they, I went forward to meet them as they were coming through, coming out from after customs. And as they walked forward, some girls went by and went, Victor Spinelli! And I said, Christ, my father said, what the hell have you been up to then? <laughs> I said, it's the, it's the, it's the bank. Well, cut. We're on the plane now, and we're going to the Bahamas to start filming Help. And we landed in New York. We weren't allowed to get off the plane. We just landed to refuel. And we're all on this plane, and uh, with the Beatles, of course. And suddenly, an immigration guy gets on the plane. He says, is that a Victor Spinetti on this plane? And John said, they're deporting you, you bloody wop, you know. Ellis Island awaits. So <laughs> I said, yes, that's me. And he said, would you come to the door of the plane, please, and wave? Your fan club is at the airport. <laughs> the Beatles said, is fan club? <laughs> and we stood at the door of the plane, waving with the lads. And they're shouting, Victor! <laughs> and I get jelly babies and teddy bears and get back on the plane, and John said, hey Vic, we're really impressed with your fan club, you know. Do you think we could join? <laughs> I said, well, I don't know. I said, uh, I'll ask the girl who started it, and uh, they joined. And not many people know this, and it's not in any record book anywhere, but Brian Epstein and the Beatles, were card-carrying members of the official Victor Spinetti Fan Club of America. <laughs>